Okay, now we've got our block snug down, centered up in the stand. You will want to go around to the back side of the machine. This is your main clamp right here. This is what actually holds the boring bar to the table. And you've got to break that loose so that you can slide your machine back and forth on this T-slot right here. You want to just barely uh, snug it so that it doesn't move around. Get it in the area of your uh, cylinder bore. These right here are the uh, cat's paws or expanders or shoes, but uh, Van Norman calls them cat's paws. They're meant to center the uh, boring bar in the bore. This right here is the handle to draw the bar down into the cylinder. You want to pull this collar out so that it engages in this notch. Once you have that engaged, you can then crank the bar down into the bore. You want to put it roughly an inch into the end of the bore. And once you've got that end of the bore, you come back up. You want to make sure your clamp is loose so that the bar can move around. Then you come right here. This knob is what expands or moves the cat's paws out and centers it in the bore. There are two parts to it. The outer ring is your coarse adjustment and moves very fast. The inside is your fine. What you want to do is turn the outside. Always start off with the outside. You want to turn it till it stops. It's good and snug. Then you want to take the inside ring and just go maybe two or three clicks. And that's it. You don't want to ever want to crank down on the inside fine thread. You can break things inside. Go back down. If you look, the cat's paws are now all touching the cylinder walls. So that bore, the boring bar is now centered in the cylinder bore. So you want to come back to the back of the machine. I usually place one hand down here on the bottom to hold the clamp, reach around the machine with this hand and then tighten it up and you want to snug it, well more than snug it, you want it good and tight. That right there locks the bar to the stand so that it can't move during the boring operation. Now when you go to remove, or well, take the tension off of the cat's paws, you need to reach up with one hand, push in on the spring to take the tension off, then you can turn the outer knob, rather difficult holding the camera at the same time, but Now I've retracted the cat's paws. They're not touching the bore anymore. This machine was designed to actually bore with the cat's paws expanded out, just barely dragging the cylinder. That keeps the bar straight as it goes down. This is the only uh, boring bar that does that, or Van Norman is. None of the other manufacturers do that. Uh, about half of the machinists that I've dealt with use the cat's paws out during the boring operation. I started off doing it and did it for many years and then I uh, actually quit. I hadn't had any any issue with it so once you uh, bring the cat's paws back in you don't really have anything else to do with them uh, until you go to the next bore. Now that's done we're going to take our lever and bring 
the bar back out of the cylinder. There's the opening right there where the, uh, the bit slides in. We're going to go to our Van Norman tool kit right here, which is pretty much complete. I've got all of the cat's paws there for different uh, size cylinder bores. The number threes are what's in the machine now, and I use those 99% of the time. Uh, got several cutters here. I never use them. I purchased a Lacey Williams Super 6 cutter. The old bits you would actually have to sharpen. Right there, you would actually have to sharpen that point. The Lacey Williams does away with that. They've got replaceable triangular bits. You've got three on each side, so it's a six uh, six sided you can do many 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 cylinders on one point when it gets dull you either turn to another corner or flip it over and go on to the next hole this is your uh, boring bar micrometer and with the boring bar micrometers they're not like standard ones standard ones go in a uh, 25 thousandths per increment per line on a boring bar mic, they go in 50 thousandths increments, and if you look on the thimble, it goes to, sorry, uh, 50 thousandths instead of 25 thousandths per revolution. So you have to keep that in mind when you're setting up the block and machine to be bored. This cutter is set to four inch and 56 thousandths right now. The block I'm boring is already 40 over and every time you go and you set up another cylinder I'm sorry, every time you set up another block you usually should go about 15 thousandths shy of uh, what your final bore is just to check it on the first hole this machine normally cuts about a thousandths to a thousandths and a half large so you need to keep that in mind when you're setting it up so I've got it set at 56 thousandths it's gonna cut say a thousand and a half large so we'll end up around uh, 57 and a half to 58 and that'll leave you about two thousandths to hone out with your machine. Uh, usually the larger you go in bores, the more it cuts off, uh, cuts oversize. Say for instance on a uh, big block it might cut two or two and a half large, but you have to calculate that and that goes in, your tip could be worn, uh, a lot of different variations, but at any rate, uh, you should always cut your first bore uh, small so you can check it with your dial bore gauge to see where you need to move back or forth to accommodate it. 